Okay. Well, welcome friends and comrades as we're kind of all shuffling into the Zoom internet virtual world together. Welcome to the fourth and final reading of Revolutionary Poets Brigade's newest anthology, Building Socialism. Just wanted to say thank you to all the poets worldwide who contributed. I really believe that this next decade, beginning with this eruption of a year 2020, will be the year that we take on corporatism, fascism, imperialism, colonialism, Zionism, racism. All of that was begun in part by some of the poets here and will be continued by some of the poets in here as well. We have poets ranging from age 15 all the way up to the classics. And it's just an exciting group of work. I'm very happy to have been one of the editors of this anthology and very proud of the work that you all have contributed. So thank you. And as an invocation, <clears throat> I would like to read the prefatory, which was drafted by Jack. And on behalf of my fellow editors, Karen Melander Magoon, John Curl, and myself. <clears throat> Because when the pandemic of coronavirus took hold of the city of New York, synchronous with Italy, there rose up in the unconscious consciousness of many an instinct, not only there, but all over the world, that only a socialism could save the dying international humanity. Because with the murder of George Floyd and the pouring into the streets of millions as if to say that capitalism was the root cause of injustice and inequality, as if to say that this country's refusal to jail the leaders of the Ku Klux Klan and the Nazis who dem demonstrated at Charlottesville and to insist that racial bigotry is not free speech is, and is among the root causes of police brutality because the Revolutionary Poets Brigade of San Francisco has already, established, has already published six annual anthologies under the title Overthrowing Capitalism, this year voted to change the title to Building Socialism, realizing that words like socialism and communism are among the most detested words in the lexicon of that thug billionaire president that's in power of the United States. <clears throat> and also, out of deference to the motion of Bernie Sanders. For all of these reasons, this year's anthology presents poetry and graphics related to all of the themes suggested here. Overthrowing capitalism, building socialism, the coronavirus siege, George Floyd, which we have a poem of his last words in this book, and the unstoppable momentum of a fierce new class of young people toward a new system of governance with real and genuine equality and with necessities provided to each and to all. And with that, I would like to introduce the first poet in our reading and a terrific human being to boot. Uh, Kim Shuck is Chalagi Cherokee, Euro-American poet, author, weaver, and beadwork artist. She was born in San Francisco, California and belongs to the Northern California Cherokee diaspora. She is a member of the Cherokee Nation of Oklahoma as well as our current poet laureate of the city of San Francisco. Kim, welcome and thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Shio and um, I'm coming to you from Ramatush territory, and uh, it's always an honor. Thanks for having me. Point on a fretful map. Designated a ritual of violence. Somewhere there's a list. Who will be captured? Who tamed? Who will be hunted? As I read through the Hero Poets Journal, I realize I should be writing love poems. Six pages later, I know that I do write love poems. A tourniquet poem, body armor poem. I want you walking upright into an elderhood where you tell the children what you did all the way back then in unimaginable times. 
Thank you so much for having me. Brava, Kim. Thank you. Thank you. And um, the next poet, Kitty Costello. Kitty is a poet, editor, writing workshop facilitator, and psychotherapist based in San Francisco. And she's the author of Upon, Wa Upon Waking, Selected Poems, and uh, co-editor of the forthcoming anthology, Muslim American Writers at Home, Identity, Diversity, and Belonging. Thanks for being here, Kitty. Go. Good morning, everybody. Good day to wherever you are in this glorious and aching world. Thank you to uh, the instigators and editors and Zoom masters and all. This is a uh, two acrostics. It's called Two Building Socialism Acrostics. So it's building socialism written down the side of the page once with the beginning of uh, each line starting with one of those letters. One, beckoning to all our senses comes an understanding. Look how our current culture implanted isms into our very cells like a virus raging around the earth, denigrating the ones who keep us afloat, insanely ravaging every lifeboat, negating reality and decency in favor of generating capital which is not edible or inhabitable. Sleepwalking is curable if we oh so swiftly call each other from this nightmare that's compromised every living thing, including the imagination that can foresee kind and fair and sane relations. Allow no further amassing of fortunes that corrode compassion. Liberate the minoritized from inner outer shackles with industrial strength propaganda on behalf of sharing all labor and all benefits equitably, merit accruing to this ragged broken species called us. Two, before we completely ravage the earth, under the spell of cooperation intoxication, I do hereby dedicate my life and labor to a love that knows we interbe. Don't try to stop it. It's taking hold on airwaves, in taquerias, in meatpacking plants, negating monarchs and ministries and markets, GDPing on behalf of all beings. See the labels on your overalls, your pots. Only takes a second to know you're covered in blessed labor and cooking in it. Interdependence is undeniable to all but the most miserly misanthropes. Let's see them pick their own food, imagine their own poems. Surrendering to reality is all the rage. Magnificent ceremonies have already begun. Thank you. Brava. Thank you. I love that. And building socialism along the sides. Terrific. Um, I'm going to uh, skip over Alice Der Schleisinger for right now. I don't see um, him in the queue, but we will go ahead and uh, kind of keep an eye on that and move on to Vincent Cobelt. Um, Vincent has published poetry with focus on the murals of the mission, jazz, justice, milkweed and the cracks of concrete, and teaches at the Delta Sierra Middle School in Stockton. Vincent, glad to have you with us. And go ahead and unmute yourself. All right, am I unmuted? All right, there we go. It's working out these uh, this technological stuff. All right, just uh, thank you, everybody who uh, partook in uh, publishing this book and those um, organizing the Zoom reading. Uh, thank you, uh, Kim Shuck and the poets who have read. Um, I'll read my piece today, which is called uh, Make It Plain. And the birds and the bird was flapping and flapping, but the wind was blowing and blowing. And so the bird made no way against the wind. It was held in that one spot, suspended in air, 
low in the sky until the wind ceased and it flew away. And as it flew away, it made it plain. And in that clarity, I made a quest to go tell it on the mountain, but the city wouldn't let me through. And so I searched through the maze of neon lights to find the rose that grew from concrete. And yet I could not find it for the sidewalk from which it sprang had been repaved. I searched for an exit while walking with a hoodie at the retreat at Twin Lakes in Sanford, Florida. I stood while selling cigarettes at 202 Bay Street in Tompkinsville, Staten Island, New York, while caged in Waller County, Texas, after being pulled over. Even while I was at home asleep, dreaming of an exit in Louisville, Kentucky, they found me. There I was again, buying some cigarettes at Cup Foods and I walked out to East 38th Street and Chicago Avenue. Then I realized there was no exit and no mountain to tell it on and that I would have to tell it right here, right now. At some point, America, you're gonna to have to look at yourself in the mirror and not see some fairy tale about being the greatest country on God's green earth. If you really look, you won't only see Snow White, but goblins and witches, werewolves and Frankenstein, and they'll all be self-righteous too, along with Freddy Cougar, Chucky and Jason, and once Freddy, Chucky, and Jason take their masks off, we'll see police officers and politicians. Alas, there I was trying to find the exit out this horror movie that some say I should be glad to be in, that being in it somehow validates my existence. But I don't need you to validate my existence. I just wanna find my way out because the only thing about horror movies is the black man dies first and the American Indian is dead before the movie starts. Thank you, Vincent. Bravo. Okay. <clears throat> um, just as a point to John or Karen, um, Sarah Menifee is trying to get in. So maybe we could send her another link so that she can get in. Thank you. <clears throat> and um, let's see, let's moving down the line here. We got a couple of virtual uh, pieces that are coming up, but we'll wait until John is free for that. Um, let's go now to uh, Bill Hatch, who is going to read a piece of Roque Dalton. Bill Hatch is the editor of Badlands Journal and works on environmental issues in the San Joaquin Valley. He's also the author and composer of Shelberg Blues. Bill, take it away. Am I unmuted? Yes, you are. Okay. Um, this is a great poem by Roque Dalton. A friend of mine who uh, suggested it to me 30 years ago told me the other night, he thinks about it once a week, even to this day. I'll read it in Spanish and then my translation. Sobre dolores de cabeza. Es bello ser comunista, aunque cause muchas dolores de cabeza. Y es que el dolor de cabeza de los comunistas se supone histórico, es decir, que no cede ante las tabletas analgésicas, sino solo ante la realización del paraíso en la tierra. Así es la cosa. Bajo el capitalismo nos duele la cabeza y nos arrancan la cabeza. En la lucha por la revolución, la cabeza es una bomba de retardo. En la construcción socialista, planificamos nos dolor, el dolor de cabeza, los cual no lo hace escasear, sino todo lo contrario. El comunismo será, entre otras cosas, 
una aspirina del tamaño del sol. On headaches. It's beautiful to be a communist, even if it causes a lot of headaches. Communists, you see, assume that they have historical headaches, which do not yield to analgesics, but only to the realization of paradise on earth. That's how it is. Under capitalism, our head throbs and they tear our heads off. During the revolutionary struggle, the head is a time bomb. In constructing socialism, we plan our headache, which does not always ease it, does not ease it, quite to the contrary. Communism will be, among other things, an aspirin the size of the sun. Yes. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> that is a great poem. Thank you for sharing, Bill. <clears throat> and where are you coming from, Bill? Merced, California. From Merced. Okay. Good. Bravo, Good deal. Bravo, Bill. <laughs> Bravo. All righty. Uh, John, do we have, are you free to do some screen sharing now? Yeah, we could do the screen sharing now. Um, uh, you know, I, I sent that to Sarah, but I, I, I. Yeah, I think she joined. Yep, I think I just saw she joined. So we're good. Okay, excellent. Well, um, let's go to Marcos de Souza Freitas. Um, Marcos is a poet and uh, an environmental and cultural activist. He lives in Brasilia, capital of Brazil, and is the author of In the Coming Afternoon. Um, John has a couple of recordings that, um, that Marcos sent of his poem, uh, videos, I believe. So take it away, John. Allow us a moment to screen share. Marcos Freitas, how of the three race shy to the struggle of the Casino people for the preservation of the country, the existence and the conservation of the Amazonian forest. Kawa, Kawa, sing the Casino mothers, swing the children nets. Oni Queen, real men marked with initials FC. Kawa, Kawa, sing the Casino mothers, swing the children nets. Katsanawa songs. Kenny Queen drones. Yoshi Buki Tsauni. Kawa Kawa. Singi Kashino Our Mothers. Swing the children's nets. Always the same. Always the same. Boring neoliberal speech. Always the same. The same hunger and so on. Always the same. The colossal unjustified injustice. Always the same. If you are poor and black, no never an equal chance. Always the same. And now they're talking about cultural maxims. Always the same. We give away our first, our war resource and resolve problems. Always the same. And someone say that is the new normal. The country dissolves itself. The country dissolves. Indians and black are killed in the day night light. The country dissolves. Former President Lula arrested, locked as a ready trophy. The country dissolves. And no protest on the streets. The country dissolves. And nothing blaze the best of this poem. There are those who arm him. Will there be who will save him? Marcos Freitas, Lamento you, nas Praças, Tichai, a luta do povo Caxinauá pela preservação de sua cultura, sua existência e conservação da floresta amazônica. Kawa, Kawa, cantam as mães Caxinauá, balançando as redes dos filhos. Unicuí, homens verdadeiros, velhos marcados com as iniciais FC. Kawa, Kawa. Cantam as mães Caxinauá, balançando as redes dos filhos. Cantos do Caxinauá. Desenhos Kenny Queen. Yoshi Buki Tsani. Kawa, Kawa. Cantam as mães Caxinauá, balançando as redes dos filhos. 
mesmo lero de sempre, tudo tal e qual, enfadonho discurso neoliberal, tudo tal e qual, a mesma fome e etc e tal, tudo tal e qual, a injustificada injustiça descomunal, tudo tal e qual, se é pobre e preto, nada de chance igual, tudo tal e qual, vão-se as florestas, as águas e o pré-sal, tudo tal e qual, e há quem diga que esse é o novo normal. O país se dissolve, o país se dissolve, índios e negros são mortos à luz do dia, o país se dissolve, ex-presidente Lula preso, trancafiado como um troféu raro, o país se dissolve e nada de protestos na rua, o país se dissolve e nada encandeia os versos deste poema. Há quem o arme, haverá quem o salve? Thank you, John. Thanks for sharing. You know, I think that uh, most of us can agree that, you know, when we first saw one another on Zoom, that was terrific. And then after a while, we've started to get a little Zoomed out. But what I, ha what I can say is that it's incredible that we are able to have, you know, this virtual participation, even though Marcos couldn't be here. Uh, personally, in the virtual world, he came in a different form. So... That's terrific. Thanks for sharing that, John. And um, with that, we will move on to Carlos Raul Duflar. You are here, I see. Perfect. Okay. Carlos is founder and artistic director of the Bread is Rising Poetry Collective, and it celebrates 25 years. Uh, also, the Beat Poet Laureate for New York City, New York State for 2020 through 2022 and a member of the New York City Revolutionary Poets Brigade. So Carlos, welcome. Thanks for joining us and take it away. Thank you. And in, in the belly of the beast, as Jose Martin said, you know you're wrong in the eyes of humanity inside of the colossal house of corporate America that sells its poison merchandise, a cast of ignorance and of sickness. Its great name of divide and conquer that all phases out. It's hard for democracy and freedom. The sickness rise from the grave as they march in the white Nazi superiority, the plague that kill poor people in greater number. While the CNI listens and waits, the invisible oligarchy that flashes the light like a ton of bricks that runs loose. Force words with smiles and laughter. Let us not stay silent to the human misery. 69 years ago, Paul Robinson and William Patterson presented a petition to the United Nations that we have charged genocide. I have freedom in my mind and all life matters in four directions. Let us study, raise our voice, the capital is the killer and drains the very blood of the people. Who are suffering like a railroad train, the barricades of the bourgeois fairy tales. Let us sing and march in solidarity together. For a new world is coming from the ashes of the system of the dam. Let us start a new beginning that everything in this earth belongs to us and the age of enlightenment we are the poets of the living voice as the raven flies above us. Our old songs of my past, that we will see the future. And he who believes in freedom, an old song of Ella Baker. And he who believes in freedom could not rest until it comes. And let the sun rises for a time of peace and love. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Bravo. Thank you, Carlos. Thank you very much. Okay. We will now move on to um, Romeo Alcalde Cruz. You're here, Romeo. There you are. Okay, perfect. Okay, Romeo has uh, written two bo poetry books, Washing Rice and Other Poems and Crossing the River from Remembering to Forgetfulness. He writes in Bicol, Tagalog, and English. 
Thank you for being here, Romeo. Don't forget to unmute yourself. Go ahead and unmute, please. There you go. Okay. You hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Uh, Perfect. Thank you, uh, John Curl. Thank you, Jack Hirschman. Thank you, Scott Bird. Thank you, everybody, for including me in, in this year's Revolutionary Poets Brigade Building Socialism. Thank you so much. Uh, my poem is titled Rebuilding Socialism. That day when I lost everything, my job and my health, is when I found you like an orphan child without his toys. I stared into the mist after the cities are empty. And I see you there, a vision of an orphan boy with dreams. That day when I lost everything is when I found this boy. To love one another is the only way out of this pandemic and the riots after the death of George Floyd. For soon my eyes will see heaven again Deep blue at night, started with silent stars. That sky will always be above me, above the sorrow of all my wanderings, my predicaments. As I found my way to my never, always living to living, always now to the future always present to the, to the goals, our hands together in harmony under a bolted sky, deep blue at night, started, started with silent stars and dreams. Thank you. Bravo, Romeo, bravo. Thank you so much. All righty. Uh, we uh, are not able to be joined by um, Timothy James Young. He is uh, a poet and activist from his cell in San Quentin State Prison. But he is able to, he sent us a recording of his poem that appears in the anthology, which John will share with us now. Another benefit of the virtual world. My name is Timothy James Young. I am calling from San Quentin State Prison, and I will now recite a poem that I wrote entitled Citizen. And shades of antebellum blue. Oceanic blues. African body, African amiss. Misery begins in the belly of a slave ship. Skeletal remains blink the abyss. North Atlantic bound and delivered, sold off to the highest bidder. Centuries later, they ask that I'm bitter. To remember one's Holocaust is to forfeit American citizenship. Plantation blues, ancestral cries, black bodies dot the horizon, crimson sun, fingers raw from picking cut. The moonlight stirs, freedom is a whisper. Sunrise is genocide in the eyes of 
of the undelivered. Constitutional news. Immigrants die to come here. I'm dying to leave. It is asylum I seek from three-fifths continuum. Article 1, Section 2, Buoyancy, Far Removed, Second-Class Citizenship is a ship in need of rescue. Antebellum blows. My citizenship is bullshit. It is a history omitted, color-based, second rate at best, a community in neglect, conditions, antebellum blue, no 40 acres, no mule, reparations buried deep, six feet beneath the daisy. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Penitentiary blues. The abolition of slavery is illusory. For where it ends, a prison nation begins. Manacled history. 1863 to the 21st century. No mystery. Orange jumpsuits. Blue misery. Police blues. They patrol the plantations. They now patrol prisons, poor neighborhoods, and man-made demarcations. Tangled engagement. Black criminalization. White cops. Ebony crop. Mass incarceration. Citizen. I am and I am not. In the event that I am, I am by default. Bravo, Tim. We're, we're about halfway through our program today of readers. Well, thanks for being patient, everybody. As I was saying, as I look around the Zoom room and I look around into our anthology, um, during this time, especially for those of you that are living in the United States, but all around the world, you know that this is a particularly difficult time for us as we're nearing an election, along with the pandemic and the, and the natural uprising of everything going on. And poetry, like the poems that are found in this anthology, are a salve for the soul. And so thank you for that contribution. Thank you for that gift that you have given to not only the rest of Re Revolutionary Poets Brigade, but anybody who comes in contact with this book. I, I really believe that this book uh, sort of codifies all of the essence of 2020. And um, it's a terrific work. Long live poetry. With that, let's move on to uh, a beautiful San Francisco poet, a good friend of mine, Sarah Menifee. Sarah is a San Francisco poet and activist for the homeless, homeless, a journalist with the People's Tribune, and her latest collection, Cement, was published in 2019 by Swimming with Elephants Publications. If you haven't picked up a copy of the book Cement, uh, please do. It's in the bookstores here around San Francisco. I really feel like it typifies kind of the homeless front of San Francisco. You get her words ring like a penny on the cement. So Sarah, thank you so much for your words and and please read your poem for us. Okay, I'm here. Thank you for your words, really. Um, you know, all poets, I believe, are homeless, you know, because we live everywhere and the streets, uh, you know, we're all street poets. So without further ado and um, I'm very proud to be a founding member and an active member of the Revolutionary Poets Brigade. This, I believe, is our fifth anthology. It's really beautiful. So I'm honored to be part of this and in here, so I'll read my poem that's in here. It's titled Home. It's for Mike Zant, who's my co-founder of, of First They Came for the Homeless. Um, he died last Valentine's Day of serious lung disease, but he was 
He was a great visionary and leader and on the streets. Okay, this is home for my exempt. Bags, bags, bags to hump along all day. Bag homes all the way home that we don't have. Swallowed by the maws of night, a huge white garbage truck with grinding jaws, chewing up all we own. That Jesus broke over a broken heart. I'm not moving, so go ahead, I said. Take me to jail, my son said. Young head on his skateboard pillow, dreams of not illegal liberty, but of being bound in the arms of a dear embrace. You daughter, you son. They poured water over the flattened cardboard outside the expensive chain cafe. I try to work every day just to eat. Another night gets inside his bones, the concrete ruins up through the cardboard layers from cold hell below. Into the sundown wind, folded cardboard under arm, the lilac eastern sky at your back. Been out on their ground score since thrown out. I will steal for spare change. Read this sign for a dollar. Bodies of this war on the poor everywhere. It's heart, an infected dollar in a plague of filthy lucre. You nothing with your interesting rags, fashion will steal. Money for aspartame, my sweetheart wrote on his spanging sign. Money for aspartame, he cried in his wit. A little box with an oily fish head dropped his, at his feet. Future son hides from the wind anywhere he can for 10 years on to eternity. No end, no end till yet, till yet. My son is dead and Mike Z is gone. He sits in a golden tent and says, you're, you are home. Thank you. Bravo. And in memory of Mike Zint in that golden tent somewhere. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Um, I'm looking around our Zoom here and I, um, An Anita, is that you um, on Romeo's name, under Romeo's name? That's you, Anita Cruz? Okay, perfect. And then Yolanda Katsalko, um, who is who is reading from there? So I know who's here. Yolanda. Just so I know. Okay, um, let's move on to uh, Anita Cruz. Um, Anita Odena Cruz is a founding member of Hayward's Writers Collective since 2011, living as a poet with Bay East Poets Co Coalition in Berkeley. Uh, and she is a proud member of the coalition. Anita, please read your poem for us and thank you for being here. And don't, don't forget to unmute yourself, honey. There you go. Can you unmute? Is John or Karen able to unmute her? Hit the little mute thing at the left bottom of your screen. We wanna hear you. It's at the left bottom of your screen, Anita. A button, unmute, you've got to unmute yourself.
Anita, real quick, let me move on to Gary Hicks and then we will and we'll come back to you, okay, when we get you unmuted. Does that sound good? I don't see Anita in the participant list. Ro it's, she's under Romeo. Oh, okay. Yep. Are you able to do it um, second handedly? Uh, unmute her. Romeo. Well, while we're figuring that out, let's go on to Gary Hicks <clears throat> coming to us live from the People's Republic of Berkeley, California. A communist, his poetry and politics try to reflect that. And he also edits a wannabe blog called Information 2020. Thank you, Gary. Hey, how you, how's everybody doing here? We're doing fine, fine, fine. Thank you. First of all, I want to take note that this is the second, this is the seventh volume of this anthology. But it's also a second, sort of like a second series off of something that uh, was started by Sarah and Jack and a number of other people in the, in the 1980s called Compages. And what they have in common was, is that they were both, they, both are multilingual, both are highly political, both talk about, you know, talk about everything under the sun that's, that's related to what we're trying to do here. And Compages, yeah, comp the anthologies that we've had over the last seven years are basically a logical and heir apparent to um, Compages in the, in the 1980s. And I just wanted to point that out. And I wanna thank, thank Sarah and Jack and folks like that for having made that possible. Thank you very um, much, Gary. My, um, my poem is called Delirium Tremors, DTs. Throw out another dumbass tweet. So now, the res <clears throat> so now the resident Caligula wannabe at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue wants to declare Antifa terrorist. Does this mean that retired SEAL Robert O'Neill will get a second shot at glory and assassinate that group's supreme leader as soon as DT figures out who it is? Does it mean that anyone now wearing a mask, COVID-19 or riot gear, can you tell which is which, is now suspect? I heard a rumor that those who write poetry should be the first to be renditioned extraordinarily, probably to some land where poets are blasphemous. Or maybe DT will recover from his latest round of DTs tell the hungry multitude of followers that he was just venting or kidding or whatever he wants to call today's screams from the sandbox frustrated again that he still can't figure out, figure which is fail, which shovel and proceed to throw sand in the face of someone in a MAGA hat stupid enough to approach him or a media correspondent still stupid enough to take him seriously. Meanwhile, some of us have gotten the message in a deepened attitude that we're all antithas. Thank you, Gary. Bravo. Just as a side note, I uh, out here about a month ago in chalk on my front step, I wrote, we are all antifa which you have expressed beautifully there, Gary. And somebody came out with uh, a brush and, uh, and a hose and tried to squelch it all out. So uh, if anybody thinks that <laughs> San Francisco is this beautifully progressive city, we still have some, uh, some you know, backwards people. <laughs> we are all anti-fa, we are all anti-fascists. Thank you, Gary. I would like to read the poem of 
Martin Hickel, who couldn't be here today because he was randomly selected for jury duty. I cannot imagine somebody like Martin Hickel on jury duty. I've only known him through Facebook, which he has been suspended from multiple times uh, for posting communist propaganda on, the, on Facebook, which they did not like. Uh, Martin Hickel began socially distancing before it was a thing. He's been busy doing nothing and going nowhere for a while now and hopes to continue as long as possible. <laughs> and this is his poem, Timeless for Gene Ruggles. That day, like any day, this day you are reading these words, but that day in the sunshine warmth of a mid spring afternoon, he looked at you and asked, does it matter what he asked? It was the way he asked as if you were the only person alive in the universe, his eyes on yours with such pure intent and your answer at that moment, the most important thing he would hear all day so that your reply came carefully aware for an instance of the power in thought and the beauty of meaning real listening can impart. And whether he agreed or not, nodded his assent, as honored as you were to be asked, taking in what you offered and considering it alongside his opinion, and thereby giving you the gift of feeling understood, as if understanding were the greatest gift a person has to give, and sharing then his life with you seemingly as freely as he was letting you share yours with him. While soft voices chattering with the birds in the cool patio behind the coffee shop fell away and left you two lost with an idea about what the other had to say as when hearing something true, something truly timeless. Thank you. And wherever you are, Rusty, I <laughs> hope you're dealing with jury duty well. Okay, we are moving on to Mr. Bill Nevins in New Mexico. His book, Heartbreak Ridge and Awe, are newly published from Swimming with Elephants Publications. Thank you, Bill. Hi, it's great to be here. Thank you, John. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Jack. Great to see you, Sarah, and everybody else. <laughs> okay, I'm up in uh, what we call B38, Black Lake, New Mexico, and we just passed through, uh, we are in the midst of the pandemic, of course, and we are isolating here. And uh, we just passed through the uh, Luna forest fire, which was quite fierce and to be seen over the ridge from us. Uh, we almost evacuated <laughs> and then uh, a blizzard came and blessedly the snow fell down on top of the, the fire. So the firefighters are still out there. Uh, a herd of 150 elk walked by the house just about two days ago. So um, life goes on, life is continuing up here. Um, I wrote this poem uh, a little while ago and I was so proud to have it in the uh, in the anthology, uh, Building Socialism. It's called A Hymn from Holy Silence in memory of David McReynolds. Let's never sing their Star Spangled Banner again. Let's just forget the words. It would sound too ironic, like their president's sour sarcasm. It would sting like bleach in our unhealed wounds. The great American pastime is over anyway. And we can't afford to play games. We need no more fireworks bursting in air. We have time now only for online funerals and Zoom family grievings. Our time is too precious to waste. Let us not dishonor these patriot graves. In this sad time when their heartless president jokes of disinfectant cures while our people shelter in place, uncertain and afraid, or when they bravely die as heroes give up their lives or in despair, we must mourn our dead martyrs, truly 
mourn. We must not celebrate their deaths as necessary casualties in a war for the boss's profits and greed. Such death celebration is obscene in itself, as I well know. That's the old gold star flag rag, that war song government show of folded flags and body bags, that white Christ racist crap that locks our country up behind walls, scared and so confused, that drowns soft words of honest truth with 21 gun salutes, rockets red glare and empty prayer while the bought off preachers preach. In this time, of mass dying, this greatest depression. We don't need a war movie fantasy where a smug commander in chief, his brass, his lackeys and his vampire children declare victory, open up the land for business as usual, whole parade, strike up stolen Rolling Stones tunes, send the Blue Angel jets roaring over us and pin medals on themselves, this, is no reality TV show. There is no apprentice and the big bad orange boss is broke, dead broke. This is real life, real death. The boss's noise has no place in our public life now. We need quiet. We need true communal mourning, keening if you will, or stern raised fists, deep meditation, weeping, silent wakes for these tragic deaths that should never have been. The question now is what is to be done as we imagine our next day, as we take our lands and our businesses away from rich fools, as we open our own new people's schools, as we honor our dead in tears and quiet rage as we cry no more deaths, never again, as we shout at our screens in our streets, shut the hell up Trump, as we cautiously shop, as we don our masks and build our unions, as we recite wild loving poems, as we pray perhaps, as we vote blue reluctantly or enthusiastically as red and black and rainbow flags unfurl as our silent new anthems are born as we join our sacred dead in their endless song of holy stillness as they sleep as we remember as we fight as we wake again in hope by each new scarlet dawn's early light. Gracias, amigos. Bravo, Bill. Thank you very much. Hymn from Holy Silence, which is a perfect way to describe the snow falling on an arid New Mexico and an arid West. Thank you, Bill. Okay, I saw Anita, and I think that she's unmuted. Are you ready, Anita? Yeah, Anita. I'm ready with the baby. Okay, hello. <laughs> Thank you, Anita. Hello. hello. <laughs> uh. Okay. I, whose lungs filled with the blackness of mines, who sniff at how the cogs of wheels grind so slowly, to my death, hoping that there is a better exit. Hi, who sleep through the factories, fighting for scraps to be thrown at me. Growling. Growling like a dog as I float to slug it out to another day. I burn from the fiery furnaces of the streets of the offices, upon which wind the bills of endless paperwork trying to drown me in million words until I am deaf and mute. I wandered from the battles of office politics, groaning a paroxysm of pain, putting out the dagger stabbed on my back. 
I was not looking when they come like thieves in the night. I numb by the algorithm of Wall Street in the crust of stocks and bonds, trying to float after another round of bad news of bankruptcies and consolidations. I'd willing in livid marriages no, no, of Trump no. Towers and Ma Largo, golf courses concocting lobbying for papers and inside games, for access and contracts in the government. You portfolio managers, luring us to the position of risk and danger on uncertain positions of greed and fear. Hearing the choice of that decipher life, I choose life instead. Warmly thinking, let this waste be fulfilled after closing the bank vault. Hoping that the next day will be easier to make the choice away from all the darkness. I registered good and evil. A tremendous wisdom still live on me on the planet. I am better than the slave to capitalization, which whipsawed and chained me to a machine with endless cravings waiting for mere pitons. Now I am a refugee, yeah. happy to have learned my lesson and will no longer be careless as to how I will live the next chapter of my life. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. Thank you. And thank you to the young revolutionario that you're holding Bye -bye. as well. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> and Bill is right. Baby cries are poetry. So thank you for your poem too. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, terrific. Bye bye. <laughs> oh, that's terrific. Okay, uh, Mr. Bruce Isaacson is the publisher of Zeitgeist Press. Yeah, Press. He is a poet laureate emeritus of Clark County, Nevada, a community of two million souls that encompass Las Vegas and the Vegas Strip. Bruce, glad to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? can hear you terrific great. great thank you i'm really proud to be included in in this book with so many uh talent so much great poetry and so much great feeling for the hopes for the future uh, my poem is called history is a child lost in the forest and it starts with a little uh, epigram by uh, david lerner a poet who is a friend of mine uh and it goes, pretend that history didn't grow up to be a mongoloid idiot with fangs. Well, the Holocaust once had us humming with mm -hmm. self-righteous certainty that murder cruelty are the rule that proves something. A poet tells me Native American children still often disappear. Investigations, she says, are half-hearted. She lost a daughter, seven years old. And she tells me, I feel horror, panic, thinking of my daughter. The Holocaust lasted six years. Native peoples feel it never stopped. History's a stove, as in, don't stand too close to that steaming, cooking, burning, who knows where you should have been standing if your daughter disappears. You'd ask yourself why Jews went, in, went easy into boxcars, or Tibetans took the philosophical view, or after 5,000 years, tribes were cleared from Florida, then Badlands, then oil fields of Texas. I don't own a single gun. Some Americans fear a knock on the door will take grandma. Men give orders to uniforms that take children from parents with impunity for the takers. Ding dong, hello. Always impunity for the takers. Resistance is an open hand for someone who needs it. 
Resistance is a song that reminds us of our better selves. Loving your grandma who came here from chaos is resistance. Painting dream masterworks is resistance. Living in high-rise, luxury-gated, master-planned palimonies is not refuge. Refuge sleeps in a closet, pleads with an officer at a border. Refuge knows that people who love you sometimes need help, money, lawyers, need just to be seen, whatever we can give. This morning, I drove from the bay to the mountains where my Russian immigrant stepson lives with his wife from Mexico and their 18-month-old boy who loves fire trucks. My son is a one-trick pony. That trick is tech, the right trick for history today. So fortune smiles on that family. They gave him some winner slake all survival of the bitterest beliefs for the way up. But now he worries on his wife's Mexican Mojave family, her sister especially. He wants to help her escape extreme poverty. He says the words like they were open sesame extreme poverty. He paid schools and training and work clothes and visas, but the doors won't open for her. Frustrated, he says it again, now like flipping away a Rubik's cube as his accent momentarily appears, extreme poverty. He has a happy family, good income. The list of people he wants to help suddenly seems impossibly long. This cubes may be the first big puzzle of life he can't solve, but he will keep trying. These thoughts belong to me driving over the Santa Cruz mountains with the sun breaking through full forest on a crisp winter day. So far, the world is insoluble as the disappearance of a child. History is a mongoloid idiot with beautiful eyes. This forest has been here at least 5,000 years. We will keep trying. We must keep trying. Bravo. Thank you so much, Bruce. We must keep trying. Hasta la victoria siempre. Mm. Okay. Looks like we, uh, we've been joined by Miss Jeannie Powell. And so we will turn to her for the moment to read her poem, Alley by Alley We Build. Uh, Jeannie Powell has four books in print, including My Own Silence and Carousel. She covers cultural events in San Francisco for Stark Insider. Welcome Jeannie, glad you could make it. Thank you. I had to tear myself away from my other group, um, but uh, it's well worth the sacrifice. Delighted. Yeah, glad you made it. Delighted with this wonderful book. Alley by alley we build. Very clear he was about his outlook in life. Work with what you know. Work with what you have. First person care is the rule. Let every glance be indifferent to others. Once you are clear, they pose no threat. She was small in that alley corner. He typed her, then ignored her with every indifferent glance. Stretching under a thin red coat, shivering every breath she took. So small in that alley corner. Not worth a serious look in his backgammon world. Rose, where did you get? Sprinted through his memory, quick stepping past old pain. Rose, where did you get that red? That other one had been a miniature too in her merry girl crimson shawl. He shrugged and repositioned his hard won nonchalance all through evening shadows so that every indifferent glance could find this new heart quickly in case she lasted through the night. She woke up in that alley corner under a flowering full moon, glanced both ways and sat up. Beside her, coffee in a cracked mug, a cup of whiskey and poems by Ho Chi Minh, 
wide-eyed, she reached and claimed the poems. With gentle caution, he brought her a red shawl. He brought her a safe welcome. He offered a chance to walk a new path. Bravo. Thank you. Thank you so much for your contribution and for joining us today. I'm glad you made it. Yes. Okay. Um, and Jack, do we know if Andrea Zuccolo is going to be here? No, he's or, not. Okay. All right. Um, would you still like me to read the English? If you go, uh, yes, why not? Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. The, um, Andrea Zuccolo lives in Udine, Italy. One of his books has been published by CC Marimbo Press in Berkeley, and other appear, others appear from Capovu Capazeda e Coltro Globale Edizioni. And this poem by Andrea is called Penance's Poem. <clears throat> Tomorrow is bound between the pages of the dictionary. Taste, digest, disinfect. Stray dogs run in the fields or the order to respect the safety distances is extended to them too. I drew a flower on a paper, but without splendor. An egg on the table is still, imagining it as another planet. It's necessary to discard the apathy of these plague victim days. Radio overtalk repeats itself. The flat iron is upside down and hunchbacked on the floor. I listen to the siren proclaiming the punishments. This spring smells of alcohol still 11 syringes of heparin. I lost the address of my house. Money changers, sales agents, jewelers, restaurateurs, mediators, travel agency workers, customers are on the edge of a nervous breakdown. Courthouses have suspended the hearings. The sentences have been postponed. Medical dispatches run along the aisles of the hospitals. Nurses fall on the ground. News agents wave flags. At the crossroads, the traffic lights wink to the ambulances. The death's count is a rising data. We will arrive to, to the barter of necessary goods. One soap bar for one boiled potato. One lipstick for a liter of milk. A bag of diapers for a kilo of sugar. Some think about suicide. Some have threatened it. Some have done it. Bravo, bravo. That was uh, translated by Giovanni Romano. Thank you. And uh, we will, um, okay. We're, we're nearing kind of the end of the program here, but Oscar Locatelli um, is a poet who lives in Bergamo, Italy. He was the redactor of Abiti Lavoro, a magazine of workers writing. And Jack will read the English of of Oscar's poem. Oscar, thank you so much, grazie. Thank you. First of all, I want to say uh, that uh, it's a honor for me to be here with you in your home, in your house. Um, this book is very, very uh, fine, good, a very good job. Complimenti, bravi, bravi. And uh, now I'm going to read my, in Italian, in Italian, my poem. Il sogno socialista. Il mio cuore è un soviet che continua a non sopportare lo sfruttamento. Per uccidere i sentimenti degli operai, le belve hanno raso al suolo le fabbriche. Amano fare jogging nei deserti urbani. Concimano la cultura dello scarto, ma non sanno che la vernice rossa non asciuga mai. Grazie. Bravo, bravo. <laughs> This is, uh, it's called The Socialist Dream. My heart is a Soviet. that still can't stand exploitation. 
to kill the feelings of the workers, the beasts have torn down the factories. They love jogging in urban deserts. They fertilize the culture of waste. But they don't know that red paint never dries. Ah, terrific. <laughs> that was Oscar, Oscar's own translation. He translated that. And I, he asked me to read the the Italian uh, the, uh, the translation. Now I'm now I'm going to read, uh, now I'm going to read one in translation uh, of um, of Marco Cinque. Marco Cinque numero. It was, uh, and it was translated by Alessandro Baba. And Marco Cinque and Alessandro and uh, two members. Did you hear with you, Oscar? What a magnificent poem from me. Uh, two no, members. Oh, wait, oh, wait a minute. Sara, Everybody on the hunt Oscar, could you mute, mute your mic, please? Before Jack begins reading. Thank you. Yeah. Marco Cinque and Alessandra Bava, two members of the Rome Revolutionary Poets Brigade. The brigades, uh, for those who don't know, the RPB exists, began in San Francisco, and now there are five brigades all over the United States. Uh, Carlos Duflav uh, was a member, uh, is a member of the New York Brigade, and there were brigades in Chicago, and um, and in Italy there are seven brigades, and the Rome Brigade is Marco is part of them. And so I'll read his poem in it in in both languages. It's called uh, Bella Ciao. Accompagno Ibrahim Goksek. I rinunciato alla tua stessa vita per lasciar vivere un'idea che indomita resiste ai mor morsi della fama nel rosso che respira in ogni buio sull'orizzonte ucciso dei diritti per 323 giorni e notte La tua pelle prosciugata sulla ossa ha passito in un letto di tormento assieme a Elin e Mustafa, tuoi compagni in questa assurda lotta. Il ricordo è un musica che vibra tra il flusso dei tuoi fragili pensieri, un suono che unisce ogni frammento nel pugno chiuso contro il dittatore che alto si leva come un carezza e il sole del bosforo non smette di svegliarsi ignaro sulle tristi sfoglie di questo tuo paese ma un campo di poveri ostinato continua a cantare Bella Ciao. Bella Ciao. This is translated by Alessandra Bava, written by Marco Cinque. Bella Ciao to Comrade Ibrahim Goksek. You gave up your own life to allow an idea to keep on living, which resists untamed the hunger pangs in the red that breathes in each darkness on the murdered horizon of rights. For 323 nights and days, the dried up skin on your bones withered in a bed of torment together with Helen and Mustafa, 
your companions in this absurd life. Memory is a music that resonates amid the flux of your fragile thoughts, a sound uniting each fragment in the clenched fist against the dictator that raises high as a caress. The sun of the Bosphorus doesn't cease to rise unaware on the sad spoils of this country of yours, but an obstinate poppy field keeps on singing. Bella Ciao. And now wow. I and now Jack, I'd like to close, uh, but Jack, I, really, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Before you close for you with your arcane, I just wanted to check to make sure that Alice Der Schlesinger did not isn't here somewhere and I can't see him. Is no. Alistair or Jessica Luce, you, we, those are our only two that we're missing. Yes. Folks, if you can, please, um, to, when you get the chance, look at Alistair Schlesinger's poem. He's 15 years old and this is his first poem, the debut poem. That's what, it yes. were very terrific uh, no, to I, have him here. Go on. So, uh, Jack, take it away um, with our closing poem. Yes. Let me just, before I read the closing poem, let me just say thanks to uh, John Curl, Karen Melanda Magoon, Barbara Paschke, who was the proofreader, and Scott Bird, who not only did, not only moderated today, but he did the beautiful cover of the book. And the back cover was done Thank of a you. painting by Agneta Falk. And then there are visuals, black and white visuals in the book by Sandro Sadella in Italy. Agneta Falk has a black and white one in. Sarah Menifee has a photograph of Black Lives Matter. Dorothy Payne has a, a painting. She who bore them all. And Adrian Arias, had a fantastic animal number 13, a drawing. And there's the Mari Shui poster by Sin Fronteras Colectivo. I just want to indicate them because they are the visuals that belong in the work. Now I'll okay. read the, the, an, the anthology, uh, the arcane that I wrote. Uh, It's called The Young Arcane. One. First, it was like a bat out of hell. I can't breathe. And tens, then hundreds, then hundreds of thousands died because they couldn't. Then it was a knee on a neck and I can't breathe, gasped George Floyd. He was murdered precisely because he couldn't. Now it's the young, the wide world over. It's the young who are changing the world. Out of the way, old fogies, with your racy hates, your boring slots, your I don't knows and don't care what's. Out of the way, cause the young are coming through to get rid of the cops as we know them, as traitors of the working class, racist for the ruling class and its thug president who gassed and gunned people protesting American citizens who won't be content until he's in jail with his lawless and disorder gang. Two, yes, for George Floyd's six-year-old daughter, Gianna, yes, for the young going to see to it that the $38 billion given to Israel for American cops to be trained by Israeli police to put the knee on the likes of Floyd as they do on Palestinian necks is finished from this moment on and the 728 military bases in every country on earth, our American imperialism begins to shut down, surrender, our uh, khaki is kaka. Three, the futures full of beautiful young women and young men. 
all of them very aware of what's really going on in life. Nothing's going to stop them from realizing their dream of a world of loving kindness. They're not afraid and they welcome you who might be into their fearlessness. They have much to teach about what you already know and have swept under your rugs and now are being swept out into the air of your second youth. So all together, we're gonna create a kind of society that's ruled by kindness at the heart of love, knowing that it can be done and will be done by the young and the old together at last. Bravo, Jack. Bravo. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, everybody. Uh, if you would like to check out the previous readings uh, that we have done throughout the month of October, visit the Revolutionary Poets Brigade on YouTube, and John has posted them there, as well um, some some other individual poetry uh, will be posted there as well from, from people who weren't able to make it to the readings. And we invite you to continue in the struggle. Thank you to John and Karen Melander Magoon for being the technical directors of these series and facilitating all of the Zoom. Uh, and for Elizabeth Bailey for providing her Zoom room to all of us. This may conclude the reading of Building Socialism, but this has only just begun for the legacy that each one of these poems is going to snowball and become from here on out. Thank you all. Hasta la victoria siempre. I appreciate all of you. Hasta.